Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm super excited because we're getting ready for the first day of fall. We're gonna be baking, yes you guys heard right. I'm going to be making pumpkin banana bread and also take you guys through all the different rooms and show you what I did, how I decorated. If you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing before you go. Nothing gets me in the fall mood like making my home smell like fall. So I lit a cinnamon candle and I'm going to start baking something. As always, all of the ingredients along with the exact measurements are gonna be listed down below for you guys. Baking has always been super tricky for me and I think I figured out why. Number one, baking is very much a science. You definitely have to follow the ingredients and measurements to a T along with the order that you mix the ingredients absolutely matters. So here you guys are seeing me mix all of the wet ingredients first, which included maple syrup, eggs, vanilla extract, and also coconut oil. I went ahead and gave that a good whisk to make sure that everything was nicely mixed together. Next, I went ahead and added my sugar. So I did use brown sugar for this recipe and I went ahead and tried to dissolve as much of it as I could. Next, I went ahead and added my bananas. So I took my time, made sure that I could mash these as well as possible. Um, I've also found that if your bananas are not super ripe, then you can mash them in a separate bowl and then mix the mashed bananas into the liquid. Next, I added my pumpkin puree, and this part is important. You wanna make sure that you're using pure pumpkin, not pumpkin pie filling. Those are two different things. And I'm just making sure to mix it all really, really well. Now we can go in and start adding our dry ingredients. So I used baking soda, baking powder, salt, pumpkin spice, and cinnamon. And I went ahead and mixed that really, really well. And now the last step is adding our flour. Typically I would use almond flour, but I used it all up last week. So I'm just using regular white flour, but the trick here is to add it a little bit at a time and fold it into the mixture. So once the mixture is nicely mixed, I went ahead and set it aside and started uh, putting a little bit of grease on my pan. And I remember seeing this in a cooking show one time where they added flour to the grease and they kind of coated the whole pan. So I did that and honestly, I don't even know if I needed to do that, but I mean, it seemed pretty professional, so I did. And then I added the mixture to the pan. I sprinkled some cinnamon on top and also pumpkin seeds, but I think walnuts or even pecans would be really good on top as well. And then I went ahead and popped that bread in my preheated oven. So now I can enjoy that delicious aroma while I clean and just get every room prepped for all of the decorations to go up. First thing I changed out was this wreath that I had put up during springtime. Um, it's so funny because originally I told myself that I didn't like the way that the pink wreath looked and I ended up keeping it all year long. I switched it out for this wreath and you guys know I'm all about having decorations that take me from the fall all the way through the holiday season and I feel like this one does exactly that. Um, so I went ahead and put some rope through the back of it and then I put a command hook in the center of my oven hood and used that to hang it and made sure it was super secure so that no accidents happen. Of course, the first thing that came out before I even put up my decorations was my pumpkin Dutch oven. I got this at Williams Sonoma last year, um, but I do believe Home Goods sometimes carries them, so keep an eye out. I also went ahead and styled the floating shelves a little bit differently. I still have my canister where I keep my dog treats, and then I found this pumpkin at Home Goods that kind of lights up. It's really pretty. And all the other pumpkins are pretty much ones that I've collected over the years, probably from Home Goods also. To the right of the stove, I added this really pretty candle that says Hello Fall. Then I also created a little home for my teapot. I'm going to be giving away a McKinsey Child teapot, one just like mine. So if you love this teapot, definitely go follow me on Instagram. It's just at Miss List Heart and check the info box for the rules. Also, we don't usually decorate for Halloween, but I found this towel that had a little bit of pop of black and pink and I thought it was perfect for the kitchen and it's so adorable. Um, so yeah, I had to include that. 
For the island, I just put together a little tray. This is from Home Goods from like years ago. And then I added my flowers. I love having fresh hydrangeas around this time of the year, especially really fall colored ones. I added my candle, a little gold pumpkin that I DIY'd last year. And I also filled this apothecary jar with candied pecans because I really love the contrast and the colors. It all kind of just went together. You guys saw my coffee station in the last video. It still looks th exactly the same, but I just added these really fun Halloween cookies for color and also because we love these cookies. They're so good. I knew I wanted to incorporate a little bit of traditional fall colors. So I found these maple leaves. Um, you can find these pretty much like at any craft store. I picked mine up at Pottery Barn. They were having a sale recently. Um, and I just kind of cut off the stem so that I could fit them in this vase. And it looks so beautiful. So I ended up putting this vase in our entryway. So I went ahead and wiped that whole entry table down. Um, the table is from Z Gallery. I get asked a lot. I got this like almost like six years ago. And I'm going to place the arrangement in the center. And I wanted something that was super symmetrical. So I already had these gold candlesticks. I placed three on each side. And then I also added my Z Gallery pumpkin that I've also had for years. And then just a tiny little baby pumpkin to add a little bit of symmetry. And then to the bottom, I added this furry stool, which I also already owned. And my pink pumpkin that I picked up a few years ago. And I love the way that this looks, especially at nighttime when the candles are lit. It's so inviting, so fall and so beautiful. Next up is the formal dining room and I actually kept this room pretty simple. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, as you guys can see, I have changed a few things around. I put our canopy chair in this room. I kept our blue chairs and then I also put the blue drapes that I had in our master bedroom in here. That was actually an idea that one of you guys gave me because of the blue chairs and I was like, oh my gosh, that's genius. And I love the way that it looks. So this room is, it, it's pretty dramatic on its own with all of the statement pieces going on. So I wanted to keep the decorations pretty simple and I wanted to create almost like a really romantic ambiance. So I started by adding these cake stands. I bought these from World Market, I think last year. And I added a ton of flameless candles, all different heights. And then I did include two tea light candles because I wanted something with like chrome on it just to give it a little bit of dimension. And then on the second pedestal, I added this cute little pumpkin. I also DIY this pumpkin last year. And then I added this really pretty gold crown. I think I got this in a PR package. I don't even remember when, but I always love incorporating it in this room because I feel like it just goes together. And then I added these pumpkin placemats, which I'm not sure I'm going to keep them on here. I don't know how I feel about them. I feel like they kind of take away from the presentation. But other than that, I love how this room looks. It's just very simple. At night, it just feels so cozy and so inviting. For my living room, I didn't really do much because honestly, this room ends up being Sebastian's playroom. So the less items this room has, the better because it takes less time to clean up. I did shop my home and switch pillows around and these pillows were actually in my master bedroom, but I thought they looked beautiful in the living room. And then these pillows I did pick up this year. I found them at Home Goods. They're kind of like leopard print, but I love that it's like a darker leopard print because it ties in our sofa. And just to show you guys what has changed in my living room, I moved the, the plant over over to one side of the room because if you guys look on the right side that is where all of Sebastian's toys are. I also have my ghost table back there so I can put a little bit of decor up there. Also you will notice our area rug is missing and that's because we sent it in to get it deep clean which we do twice a year. And like I said I kept things very simple. I just added my basket with the pumpkins next to the fireplace and it's probably going to be filled with Legos by the end of the day. <laughs> by now the bread was completely done baking and I was so proud of the finished product you guys like not only does it look absolutely beautiful but it tastes so delicious so once it was done completely cooling off I went ahead and served it I love this with either cream cheese or warmed up with a little bit of butter and some condensed milk it is seriously so good
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. I will have links to everything that I talked about down below, recipe, ingredients. And if you do want to enter to win your very own Mackenzie Child's teapot, go follow me on Instagram at Miss Liz Hart, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.